Hey y'all, so I actually got a good night's sleep last night. Praise the Lord. Like, <sighs> getting a good night's sleep is so important and good. You know what I'm saying? But for anybody, including if you live in a car or whatever. And part of it was because my, so my CPAP worked. It, the temperature came down. I didn't have a migraine last night. I made sure I went to the bathroom in a reasonable amount of time before going to bed so I didn't have to pee at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, all the things. So yeah, really, I did have to wake up in the middle of the night because my CPAP battery was out, which which made sense. It was at, I think it was below 20% when I plugged it in. So it was like the fifth night. So it totally made sense that it had run out. I was purposefully having it go all the way down to zero as part of the reset because you're supposed to apparently with these EcoFlow batteries or maybe all batteries, I don't know, every three months ha go do a cycle where it goes all the way up to 100, all the way down to zero. I think you're supposed to do it three times, but I'm not going to do it three times because that, that is too much for me. I'm just doing it once. But I, I actually think now it is working okay. I think the issue is, is that with this particular EcoFlow battery, so this is the EcoFlow River 2, okay? The percentage on the front is has nothing to do with anything some of the time. I'm not saying it is any, has it's always wrong. It's not always wrong, but it can get off really easy. And when it gets off, it is terribly off. So to fix it, besides, you know, updating the firmware, blah, blah, blah. What I did was... I charge, I drained it all the way down to zero or when it shut off because it wasn't shutting off at zero, shutting off at like 67% because it was completely messed up. Then charged it all the way up to 100. And what I realized was that last percentage going from 99 to 100, which was supposed to take five minutes, took 47 minutes or something like that because 99 wasn't 99. You know, it was 60 or something. I don't know what it was because the charging this battery at 100 watts should take about three hours, a little less than three hours. I think so it, yeah i took that whole entire time once it got to 100 then i reset it i let it be off for about 24 hours and then i just used it all the way down to zero so now i'm going to be recharging it all the way up to 100 before i use it again and if it, i don't have it charged up to 100 by tonight just because i'm just charging it through my car as i kind of ambiently drive around i'm not going to like sit and just run my car and i don't like to actually bring this into the library because it's loud even if i turn it down to a hundred to where it's not doing super fast charging in the library. The the fan, so the fan on the big battery, I think has different settings. This one, I don't think does. I think it has just one because it's still loud. And I just, just like, I don't want to be loud in the library because I go there like all the time. You know what I mean? Even, and the thing is, I don't think anyone would actually say anything because I don't go into the quiet section, right? I'm in the like main section. There's people like on the phone and people chatting and stuff like that. It's, you don't have to be super quiet in there, but still, you know? People who actually do their meetings and I'm like, just do your meetings in public, but whatever. I'm a lawyer. So I would, the idea of doing a meeting in public is not, obviously not something that I could ever have done. So anyway, I'm much less unhappy. I don't know if I'm happy, but I'm much less unhappy with this battery. I'm kind of understanding how that works. And now I'm getting, now that I'm understanding this better, I'm getting more willing to deal with my big battery running a fridge. Now, if I do that, I will most likely not be doing electronic cooking with that battery because it'll need all the power it can to run the fridge, I think. And then, uh, you know, charging devices and, and little things like that. I don't think it's going to be a problem when I'm traveling because I will drive so much. And then if I'm somewhere else, I won't, if I'm not driving, then I can use my solar panel. My solar panel can easily charge my little battery, but my big battery, it's really only going to top it off a little bit. But I think it might be a better idea to use a solar panel to charge all my devices and my little battery and then have my big battery just run off the car, you know? I don't know what I'm going to do as far as when I'm actually traveling, if I'm going to plug the fridge into the car or plug the battery into the car. It's more efficient to probably to run the fridge off the car. But then how do I, when do I recharge the battery? You know, I can do both in theory because I do have two 12 volt plugs, but that's only in theory. I have to actually have enough, like it needs to not have um, a power problem for the car. So I don't know. We'll see about that. I had my doctor's appointment this morning at nine. 45, I think. But so we're having times that are not on the hour or the 30 minutes. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing that. There was something else. Oh, so the I just want to share is, so now that my channel's monetized and I'm getting a lot more people and there's people commenting and it's so wonderful. I'm now getting pitches for doing, getting free stuff and making videos about it, which is really interesting. I've gotten three so far. The second thing is for 
something is for a uh, custom mats in the car, which I actually need a new one. So maybe that the one I just got today or last night was for some kind of speaker system that hooks up to your phone for calls that you do it in your car. I don't know. I actually need to like click on it and see what it is. So yeah, so I think I'm at that level of YouTube-ness where you're not going to have a sponsor who's going to pay you money. However, you can get free stuff in return for doing a video. One of them, they're literally just looking for me to mention in a video. The other, I think they want me to actually make a video about it. So we're going to see what makes sense. But to be honest, if it's a, a product like I was literally planning to get another custom, not, to, not another, the one, the floor matte thing that I got wasn't custom. It was this cheap junk from Amazon that I cut up and totally is, does not fit and it slides around all the time and I hate it so much. So I was planning to get another one anyway. I was thinking about just getting it from WeatherTech. But the problem is, is that I only need one. I don't need it for the other sides and you can't just order one. You know what I mean? But so these guys, if they're sending me free, they probably can just send me one. And that would be a kind of a win-win. I have to make a video to see what they actually want. And then I, then I hit like a coupon code to give y'all and then I get a commission. That's usually how it works is at my level of YouTube-ness. Now, when you're bigger on YouTube, then you can actually get sponsored. Like people make sponsorship deals for like a whole year and they'll give you a certain amount of money every month or every quarter or once a year. And then you, they're paying for a certain number of kind of ad spots that you do, maybe even dedicated videos, but mostly just spots in your videos and then links and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And then on the Amazon affiliate side, I am fish I sold four books from when I was talking about my goals and I was talking about the books about changing your life and also from Barbara Sher. Sure. I don't know how to say her last name. Amazing books. Still highly recommend. I they were on my top ten most important books in my life. Anyway, so four people bought them, two audio books and two regular book. And I made a dollar and 50 something cents um, off of my share of that, you know, which is cool. And, but the, the big thing is it made me an official Amazon affiliate. So you have to make three sales within the first 180 days. And I made three sales within the first, uh, not even that many days. And so four sales. And so now I'm an official Amazon affiliate. And I think I can actually set up a thing like where I have like a store. So like right now I have a gazillion links in my description, which is totally fine. Mostly because people ask me, what's that you're using? What's that you're using? You know, um, but there I'd be able to make a store so I could like just put one link. It wouldn't be like a bazillion links. I put one link for all the Amazon stuff and then people can go there and they can see all the things. And I think that would be more efficient and be better for my, like my descriptions are, have uh, so many links. It's kind of overwhelming. And if you go to an Amazon store, there's the pictures of each thing. Now, some of the things I refer people to are not Amazon things, which is totally fine. But, and I would still, you know, I think that's a good idea to leave in the descriptions. Now, if I do sponsored videos, I probably would have to take, like part of the deal would probably be, I wouldn't have all those uh, other links. I would just have their stuff. Usually we do it. But I don't know if, you, if you're just getting a free product, they're not paying you cash. It would never be like that. So as I said, or I don't know if I said this, today's Friday. I'm going to do my morning routine things. I already ate breakfast. Now I'm drinking my cold brew tea, which is okay. It's, I I'm, I'm still feel like it's, it's got, I have two tea bags in here and it's still not really strong enough for me. Makes sense because it's just cold brewing tea. Like this is supposed to be enough tea bags for like a gallon and I'm making, I think this is 20 ounces. I don't know how thin people drink their tea. So I obviously I can try different tea bags. It's not just plain old Lipton that might make better tea. I mean, it would make better tea, I'm sure. And it might make a difference. I also might put both black tea and like an herbal tea to kind of make the tea taste like, you know, berries or whatever, something kind of interesting, but it's okay. It's okay. And right where we're just dealing with just okay. Today I have my doctor's appointment. I'm planning to go to the 10 by 10. Where's my, my plan today is to obviously have my doctor's appointment at 945. So it's stopped for a, little, for a little bit. I'm planning to schedule those videos and then I'll be finished with my law firm stuff for a while. I need to do my normal first of the month stuff. So pay bills, set up my budget, do my monthly reports for YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, go to the 10 by 10 and do some work in there. I have something that I need to get for in the five by 10, but that's, that all, that's no big deal. So trying to be kind of a normal day. My whole new schedule of having days that are work days and project days sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Here's here's actually, I think the better way to phrase it instead of having a day where all I do is work or day all I do is projects is what is the number one most important thing for that day? So the number one most important thing for you yesterday was work stuff. Even though I did a bunch of other things, it was work stuff. The day before that was project stuff. Today, the most important thing 
well, really the most important thing is my doctor's appointment, but putting that aside, it's paying bills and all that. So I guess that's personal admin day, you know? And because obviously I have to pay my bills and I actually have to do it fairly early in the day. One thing that I didn't know until, I never had a problem with this until the last couple of years, is that there's a whole bunch of banks where you have to pay that, you know, credit card thing or that bill or whatever by 5 p.m. Eastern. And I'm in California, so I'm in the Pacific, so that's 2 p.m. here. And I had time one time where I didn't have a chance to pay my bills until later in the afternoon. And it was late. And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? I paid it. It was like 4.30 and they're like, oh no, it's 5 p.m. Eastern. And I'm like, how would anyone know that? You know, I mean, it does say that if you log in and look, but you wouldn't like automatically think, I would actually think it's by midnight, you know, they waived the late fee and not that soon that after I canceled my card because I was like, screw you people. I don't recommend canceling cards all the time because it can hurt your impact, your credit rating because it changes the history of your credit. But I also had a card where it, my target card I canceled the red card because I hadn't hadn't used it in a long time. And so they said they were going to lower my limit unless I used it. And I'm like, what? Like, and it was there. My limit was going to go from $2,500 to $1,500. And I'm like, how about I just cancel it? And I did. And then they're like, you know, you don't have to cancel. I'm like, obviously I do because I'm not going to be bullied into using a credit card. Like, no. And the reason I stopped using it was because I just didn't go to Target very often. If you want to know what that noise is, I'm fiddling with this. So this lid, I don't really like it. It just pops off. It doesn't screw in. It does have a seal, but that you don't really care about the seal because this isn't sealed. You know, I, I would not, get, even though I like the look of this cup, I would not get it again because the lid, it comes off like so easily. I would rather have something that's like my water bottle where this is both this part and this part are screw tops. So you can know that they're actually closed. Because the thing is, I'm a very clumsy person and I have stuff all over the place. And so we needed things to be secured as much as possible. So I, I filled up my new one gallon water thing. It's in the trunk. It's kind of square. I actually like it a lot because it seems like it'll be more stable. Uh, I always like to have one one gallon of water because that's really easy. It's easy to fill up. It's easy to carry around. It's easier for me to maneuver. So it's really good for me to just be, you know, filling up my water bottle and doing little things. When I'm traveling, I'm going to bring more water. I think I'll just bring the one I brought last time, which is my, it's like two and a half or three gallons and has a spout on it, but the spout leaks. So I have to always put it up in the car, but I like how it's squared off. I actually think having bottles and water containers that are kind of squared off a little bit. I mean, they usually will be curved because it's a better, so it doesn't, it's better to have it be curved on the corners. So it's more sturdy than being squared off. However, it's square ish. So I'm going to go and start the rest of my day. Talk to you later. Went to the grocery store, went to Safeway. I got this huge bag. Okay. So this is $5. Am I like, it's, it's eight servings, but I usually eat two or three servings of vegetables at a meal. Will I, this be able to get through three days? It's only going to be in the seventies. So I don't think my cooler will get that hot. So if this is the only thing in there, that's maybe it'll be okay, but it has broccoli, carrots, and snow peas. So it's like made for stir fry and $5 is a very reasonable price for that many different vegetables that are already washed and ready to eat. I got lettuce so I could actually make my own salads. And then the reason I got this, these things is because the weather is changing now. It's in the 70s. I got three of these chicken packets. I like to make sandwiches out of these and kind of have more variety. So that way I have shelf stable food that isn't just for sandwiches. It's not just tuna fish because you can't eat tuna fish every day for many reasons. And these were on sale. So I got three of them. These rice things were also on sale. So I got two of them, brown rice and the wild rice. I am, when I'm traveling, I'm going to actually be making my own rice. If I end up using my fridge, cool, my freezer thing, then I'll be able to make my own rice and freeze it. And so I'll have my own rice. I'll do that myself. It'll be exponentially cheaper. However, I'm in town. So this is what I'm using. And then as my treats, I wanted to get some snacky kind of thing to eat. And I got Cheez-Its Grooves. These were on sale. And typically at Safeway, the prices aren't that great unless things are on sale. And then the prices are pretty good. I really love these. I'm going to have to be careful to not eat too much of them. So I spent, let's see, I spent $25 and got like 
a lot off because it was so much on sale. I saved 16%, $4.88 .88 off. I mean, everything I got was on sale except for the broccoli, <laughs> like, uh, which is very much the way I shop for things now. I almost walk down and be like, okay, of all the things that I like, which, which was on sale, I don't buy things I don't like if it's on sale. And then also like I bought, I actually don't have to get this, but it was on sale. So I got it because I know I'll eat it for sure. So now I'm going to go over to the park. I'll put away my groceries. I'm actually very excited about eating this today. I'm actually going to cook today. And my protein will either be chicken, like canned chicken or packet chicken or peanuts. I haven't decided yet what kind of a flavor profile I want, but I'm going to be able to eat tons of vegetables. I'm excited to feel very good about that. I found that I really crave vegetables. Like my body has gotten to the point where I'm very in tune <laughs> with my body being like, we need lots of fresh vegetables. If I can pull off getting, figuring out the battery freezer situation, the number one thing I'm excited about putting in that freezer is vegetables. Frozen vegetables are so cheap. They're allegedly frozen right after they're picked. And so it's a great health, like nutrient profile. Then I would be able to have fresh vegetables whenever and you can buy bags of like stir fry mix and you know different broccoli and carrots and different things that and and green beans green beans go bad fairly fast i find so there's things like that that i could buy and have all these vegetables to make my hot meals with which i'm would be really really good and then the other thing i can do is cook stuff and freeze leftovers to extend that because one of my original plans was to like you know every four to five days, cook a big, huge meal and have a whole bunch of leftovers to make it easier on me. So I don't have to keep cooking and all the time from scratch, especially for things that would take longer to cook, like a, you know, a stew or a chili or something, especially if I cook it from scratch, uh, as opposed to using convenience food. And it would be exponentially cheaper, both in a usage of power or propane, as well as food prices. You know, it'd be great if I could buy a pound or two pounds of ground beef and then make four or eight servings of whatever taco meat or, you know, a chili something, and then freeze it. Like I would be eating for tiny amounts of money. I have the same thing with rice. I make a whole bunch of rice and I, th I think you can freeze rice. I don't see why you couldn't. You can't freeze potatoes. Potatoes don't freeze well. Apparently some people freeze mashed potatoes and that turns out okay, but I feel like it might get grainy. Potatoes get this weird grainy thing. So I wouldn't be freezing potatoes, but potatoes do keep when you buy them fresh. So my thought with potatoes is when I feel like eating potatoes, I just buy a bunch of potatoes and then I buy them so that they're the right size where each potato is a serving. And then I think I'm going to eat potatoes as for breakfast. And you know, when I make my egg, uh, my scrambled egg dish or whatever it is, then I will have potatoes. Then. Yeah. So had a great conversation with my gynecologist about hormones, about menopause stuff and she is putting me on a patch and also a pill the pill is progesterone so it keeps the patch which is estrogen from giving you cancer and which is kind of wild to think about so she i'm gonna pick that up later today and then i can start on that i guess i put would put the patch on in the morning after i take a shower so that's actually kind of an interesting thing is i'll I, that actually i think will work out okay i'll put it on on a saturday Saturday will be patch day. So that'll be easy to remember. So um, I'm happy about that. We'll see how that goes. What she does is that you check in after six weeks and then six weeks is either helping you or it's not. And then they either increase it or they change it depending upon how it goes. So yeah, she's cool. I'm really glad I read the Menopause Manifesto book because I actually feel much better about everything. I feel very educated about it. So I highly recommend it if you're going through any of this transition or have menopause symptoms or actually just want to understand menopause because you know someone who's going through it, which is going to be everybody. Everybody's either going to know someone or they're going to have to go through it themselves. So that's how it is. That's how the world works. All right. So now I still have my regular stuff to do for today, which in, I, I did pay bills, but I need to like log it all in and make sure I didn't miss anything and set up my budget, do my monthly reports, schedule my videos. And I, I haven't even talked about this, but I, I have rain guards on these back windows that you can see, but I don't have them on the front because I bizarrely only got them for the back. Why did I do that? I have no idea why I did that. So I got the new ones that hopefully I ordered the right thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like that saying. I'm like, I hope it's correct. But anyway, I'm going to install it. If it's correct, I'm going to install those on these windows. And then, yeah, once I get the schedule those new videos, then I'll be on a great track for today. Then I also, I must stop by my five by 10. I have a couple things that are in there that I need to get or look for. And yeah, I'm on a great track for the week. Then after I get that stuff done, then it's just gonna be focusing on the 10 by 10 and then editing video for this channel. I have so much video to edit and it's the big long video. So I tend to do a mix. I do these big long videos that are like, you know, an hour or more long. They take a long time to edit as you might imagine because it's just so much content. And then I have videos that are these little short videos. So sometimes they're 15 minutes. I'm really talking about something and I'm, it, but and then a lot of times they're three minutes or five minutes. They're short. I like to do a little bit of a mix. It's easier for me to edit. And also I think it's helpful because some people like to watch long videos and some people like to watch shorter and also some topics like you, when you make a video, you want it to be appropriate. So I have these big, long videos that are the kind of the vlog type videos. But then when I'm just like talking about X, Y, Z or showing one little thing or like the video that went up today is the, the five minute tour, I'm going to do a longer tour sometime when I am just, you know, in a good parking situation, then I'll sit and not sit, then I'll do a tour of the car and my setup that is in much more detail. Like I'll actually pull apart my bed and show you the frame and all that kind of stuff. So I think that would be interesting for people. I'm not saying I did it correctly or I'm good at designing what a frame of bed should be, but this is actually incredibly sturdy. It makes no noise. I feel very safe. I probably overbuilt it, <laughs> but I was just like, look, I weigh over 200 pounds. I have to have something very sturdy. There's a lot of things out there. Like a lot of chairs I can't buy camping chairs because they are not good for over 200 pounds. And I'm like, no, I want something for good over 250 or 300 pounds. Cause what if I pick up something heavy and have it on my lap? Like, I, no, I don't want my chair to collapse. That sounds painful and upsetting. So anyway, I'll do that in the future sometime, maybe on this next big trip that I'm taking. Cause I do plan to do some dispersed camping, maybe hopefully if I can figure it out and I'll be able to shoot maybe <laughs> when I'm doing that. I'm not going to be shooting in the national parks very much because you can't really do that on a, for commercial purposes without a permit. Maybe the law is still kind of up in the air about that, but all right, I'm going to get to it later well, this is a great meal we got the wild and brown rice we got a bunch of different veggies sriracha seasoning and peanuts for protein this will really fill me up and feel really good to eat so i got my new prescriptions it was 186 dollars but i understand why so it's first it's for three months but my the this stuff the pills this is generic so this is ten dollars a month that's not, you know, that big of a deal. These though, these are brand name. So this is $50 a month. Uh, yeah. But you're really paying for the delivery method. These are patches that go on your skin that you change out once a week. So I am actually very excited about starting this because I'm like, it might work and might is good. But the thing is, this is really for managing symptoms. So if I like in the future can't afford it or something, then I don't have to get it, you know? And she actually even said, I don't have to titrate off. I just like stop using it. If the patches irritate my skin too much or I feel too terrible or whatever, since this is to treat symptoms, not to like keep me from dying or something, it's totally up to me. So I was really, I'm really, you know, glad about that. That's very much in my, it's my, you know, decision and I mean, it's always your decision to, to consent to medicines, but like the idea is that this isn't, this isn't like my statin, which is to keep me from having a stroke or a heart attack. You know, this is so I feel better. Now, one interesting thing that the doctor told me that I actually had no idea of is that is I, I will take the progesterone at night and apparently it's supposed to, it, there, for some people, it helps them sleep better. And I'm like, wow, that is interesting that my progesterone levels may be off and that could be interfering with sleeping. I mean, I have so many things that interfere with my sleep, but you know, you never know. Now, what she put me on the patch amount of drugs, it's 0 0.025 milligrams a day. That is such a tiny amount, right? So of anything. So the idea is that 
Um, this is just giving me this the lowest dose. She said that she, in her, her experience, about 80% of people, that's enough, you know? So, and then she's putting something in the system for us to touch base in like six weeks. Like it's like a reminder. So I could just email her if I'm doing good. In six weeks, I'm not going to be here. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to be, but it won't be here. <laughs> so it's good that we can just touch base by email and then I have to schedule an appointment because I think to talk to it, my Kaiser doctors, I have to actually be in California. However, there are Kaisers in other states and they have a program for helping you while you travel. It's like a specific, I have like a card. And if I'm in a state where there's no Kaiser, I can use Cigna using that card. I'm actually really excited about this. This is a I think very important. And I think it's a very important thing for people who are nomadic, traveling, whatever is, and I'm, I'm mostly going to be staying in the United States, at least for years. But I know that even if I'm in a place that's far away from Kaiser, I can still go to the doctor, not just for an emergency thing, but for like normal stuff too. I had to stop recording and delete a whole bunch of videos from my device because I was running out of memory. So this is actually a big problem with shooting and stuff on my phone is the management of my storage. My next phone, I don't know when that's going to be because this phone's working fine right now, knock on leather. My next phone, I'm going to like max out the storage because this is super annoying to have to manage that. I download stuff on a regular basis. But when I download, it doesn't delete from my phone and there isn't a way, like I have to actually go into the videos in my phone and click the, 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 to delete them. I mean, I can select many and delete it once, but, and then I have to go not just delete them, then I have to go into the deleted videos and actually delete them like all the way. So I am excited about going on the new meds. I am also excited about getting all this stuff done that I've gotten done already today. My next things is going to be, I'm going to go over to the library. I've already eaten, so I'm in a great place. I'm going to go over to the library and I'm going to finish up the videos, get them all scheduled out and the can do the thumbnails in Canva. And then I'm also going to do my monthly reports for my YouTube channels and get that all finished. Now, I, I do want to film a video for my third YouTube channel. So many um, about my monthly reports, but I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. It actually is a good day for filming because it's overcast. Overcast is great lighting, but I don't know for sure. Hey, also, I went to the dollar store. This is a Dollar Tree, I think. Spent 10 bucks. Um, everything's a dollar twenty-five now. Well, there might be things that are more than that, but that's generally. What and I got a bunch of different things. I actually came here specifically to get. Where is it? Oh, to get this fudge brownie mix. It's a dollar twenty-five because I want to try it out for my solar oven. Not today, because today's overcast. But sometime soon, now that my solar oven is accessible from my store. And then I also got. I'm gonna show you all my things. I also got the uh, their chocolate chip mix to because I could do the same thing. I could make like chocolate chip kind of brownies or whatever. And I got a bag of croutons. I need croutons. Dollar 25 for croutons is a good price. I also tried some things just to see. Some freeze dried apple slices. This whole bag is 15 grams. So it's just, I like to always have snacks that are different and that are 15 gram snacks for diabetes. I also got some, some um, dried cranberries. This is for salads. So like dried cranberries, like from Ocean Spray have a ton of sugar in them. And it's funny because they don't even say, like it says the ingredients dried cranberries and that's parentheses, sugar cranberries. I don't know how much sugar. It says 26 grams of added sugar per serving, but a serving says it's a fourth cup. I only use a tiny, tiny amount of this because I use it on salads as like a garnish. So this will last me a really long time. And I also got some yellow rice just to have different rice that's good for in town when I'm not actually making rice. I got some of these. These are, I use this when I'm driving. So each, so two of these is 15 grams of, 13 grams of carbs. So, and there's allegedly 14 or something in here. And most of that is all, I only see a couple mysteries. I hate the mysteries one, but this is really good for when I'm driving and I need something. And then I, so I'll, I'll keep these up here and I can just grab one. And then I got a can of their canned chicken. And the ingredients actually is chicken, not, it doesn't have like soy, whatever. So I'm going to see how this is like to put in like a, a hot meal and something where I won't be bothered by the texture because the texture of this is, is you, these are usually not very good, but it's fine if it's in kind of a, like a, I do stovetop casserole ish kind of things. And I'm thinking it won't bother me if the texture is weird. So that was my $10. 
they, because I bought all food, I guess I didn't have to pay taxes. So it's so weird to buy something $10. I actually had a $10 bill and just gave the $10 bill. So weird, it felt very old school transaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff away and then move on to my next thing. Hey y'all, so finally got the stuff done from my other channel. I, I procrastinated so much on it today, but it is 621 and that's done. So I still have some stuff on my to-do list. One, the one thing is I need to go to Target. I have a couple things I need to get. I wish I was gonna get them at CVS, but the CVS local, you can actually check to see what they have on inventory and they didn't have things I needed. So I'm gonna go over to Target and yes, I did check already. <laughs> It is nice. You can't already be guaranteed, but at least it kills you if it's not in stock, you know? So I need to do that. I might actually go a little later and then I could use that as my place to go to the bathroom at the end of the day. So I might go at like, like in two hours from now. I have not installed the rain guard and, oh, I also was going to do another reporting thing that I do. So that, the reporting thing I think I'm going to do, I could do that now. So we can have a lot of things to do, take in the shredding, because I need help for that. And I mean, pretty much it's all about the 10 by 10. So I have a whole big list of things about the 10 by 10. Getting the shredding seven box, and acres box out of there will be a, a lot. There's going to be more shredding to do, I'm sure. There's some more boxes in there, but that this is going to be a big chunk of it. The one thing I'm worried about is there's some folders in there that I'm worried they're going to be like, oh, we can't take these folders. You have to take everything out of the folders. So if that happens, that's what happens. And I'll have to do that. And I can't get help on it because it's really old client folders. So it's legal stuff from like more than 10 years to 10 years old. So it needs to be shredded, but I don't have to be keeping it. <laughs> I really hope they can just take that and throw that in that big industrial shredder. We'll see. It's $10 per box. So that'll be 70 bucks. I, I'm, I assume there's tax on it. I can't remember actually, but that is what it is. My business can pay for it though, because it's business stuff. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't mean that it's free. It just means that I get a tax deduction. So yeah, you know, it's good. The other thing on my list is installing the rain guards. I was actually going to do that, but like there's someone parked right next to me. I thought no one would be here right now because the library is closed. I think there's people over the, there's a funeral home. And I think people are at that funeral home or something. Is that, or maybe they're at the community center. So there's multiple things here. Maybe I'll open up the box. I haven't actually opened it and see if the stuff is in there and what it looks like. I actually can't remember. I mean, it was easy to do. It wasn't that difficult, but I don't remember how easy. Good morning, y'all. So I installed the things on my windows, the rain guards on my windows. So that's great. Now I can actually crack all my windows and then also for like, so no one can see that they're open for airflow and also if it's raining. So that's awesome. I also am going to do the shredding run today with the help of somebody else. So that is awesome to get that stuff out of there. And now I'm just gonna be focusing on the 10 by 10. I got all the stuff done for my law firm legal channel. And then of course I will edit video for this channel, but that doesn't really feel like work, you know? Anyway, I'm really excited to kind of have this one focus, the 10 by 10, because that way, I don't know, it just makes it a lot easier when you're focused on one thing. I don't have a migraine, which is glorious. I started the hormone replacement therapy patch thing this morning. It's actually really little. I, for some reason, I thought it was as big as the thing. It was this huge thing. It's kind of funny. Um, so, and I started progesterone last night. So we will see if that affects me at all. I don't know if the progesterone helped me sleep last night or not. I mean, it's, it, if it did, it was negligible. I always have a little bit of trouble sleeping. Not always. Many times I have a little bit of trouble sleeping because of the hot flashes. And so then I get, I have to take blankets off, put them back on a little bit. So we'll see if that's, that's one and in on nights when it's super hot. So even on nights like last night where it was not hot, it was cool. I'll have a little bit of hot flashes that disturb my sleep. And so I have to wake up and take blankets off, put them back on and, and, you know, use my fan, like turn my fan to a different direction and all that kind of stuff. Besides that, I slept pretty well, five, six I only slept about six hours, but the night before I slept a lot longer. So I, you know, that may be totally fine. It's hard to know how much sleep you actually need. It really does depend on what you're doing during the day. You know? Yeah, today is, and moving forward for the next two weeks is about the 10 by 10. I still don't have a good idea if I'm gonna be able to get it done before I leave, but I'm gonna try and then we'll see where we're at. I mean, it really depends on, you know, do I have multiple other migraines that wake me up for half a week each time? Or am I able to feel good each day? Like. It is so glorious to not have a migraine. It is so great to wake up and have gotten a good night's sleep and feel feel okay, you know? Feel normal, like feel just medium. Like that is so great. 
that is one gift of having migraines is the days you don't have them you appreciate a lot more okay i'm gonna go ahead and eat my multiple bars breakfast and drink my iced tea the iced tea is not as good as i would like it is not gonna store by iced tea cold brewing iced tea so far is just not that great it makes a mediocre tea i put in multiple tea bags it still makes a fairly weak tea so um i do think when i'm traveling i'm going to just make coffee even though i love actual sun tea and i could totally make that while traveling i really think when i'm traveling it's gonna be cold in the morning like here it's not cold in the morning when i'm traveling it typically is really cold in the morning and making hot coffee and hot breakfast is very therapeutic and feels wonderful we're here it doesn't really feel like it's worth the work so we're gonna see if this actually only takes four more minutes or if it's still off wow it took less than four minutes so it's off but in a good way yay Hey all. so I am just making some food at the park right now. It's so great. Look at this beautiful overcast sky. So it's so cool and you know, you don't have to worry about the glare of the sun or any of that kind of stuff. It's so nice, so nice. It's funny how most people would probably want a sunny sky, but I definitely want overcast. I actually have found, I, I already knew this before I moved in the car, but I found that having a lot of sunlight and glare and stuff from the sun creates a big problem for me with migraines. So, you know, there's a lot of things that may have contributed to me having more migraines this summer. One is being exposed to heat all the time. Another is having all the hot flashes. Another is not getting good quality sleep when I'm having hot flashes. Besides that, I actually been getting pretty good sleep or when my CPAP doesn't work. And then like I run out of battery or whatever. And then another, or sometimes it's people being loud, but actually most of the time that's not a problem. Or just the glare of the sun setting me off sometimes. Um, also, pollution could have been a factor this earlier this week. But when the pollution was bad yesterday before, I wasn't having migraines. So, I don't know. Someone actually posted a comment a little, I don't know. I, I'm having trouble with time. A couple of days ago, two weeks ago, I don't remember what it was, saying, you know, you should go to parks and hang out so you can, don't have to be in your car all the time. So, I'm obviously out of park right now. Anyway, well, it's not obvious, but I'm just telling you I'm out of park right now. The thing is, I actually really like being in my car. The seat is very comfortable. It's actually, it's more comfortable than most chairs I've owned. <laughs> and so I feel very comfortable here. And I've always liked being in my car. It's like a nice little safe space, a little cocoon. It's my little, you know, I'm a, I'm a snail, I'm a turtle, and I carry my little house with me wherever I go. And I actually really like that. So I think for some people that wouldn't be true. I mean, they may actually not, their seat might not be comfortable enough. <laughs> Maybe they need a different vehicle that fits them physically better. But also, I think some people aren't going to have that experience with their vehicle. I've always spent a lot of time in my car. Like I would take my son to whatever, you know, camp thing or lesson or club or whatever when my son was young enough where they could drive, you know, and, and they were in there for an hour or more and I would just go to my car. I was, I was good. I would get work done. I would read a book. I'd watch YouTube, whatever, you know, I'm, I always was like that during the times I had a car. Now I had some time when I live in San Francisco, I didn't have a car. And then, you know what I did? Very similar now, I would go to a library or a coffee shop and spend the three hours there that my, where my someone was in preschool. It's more efficient than commuting back and forth all the time. So I, I think I have a different relationship with being in my car than a lot of people do. Oh, and by the way, I didn't cook this here but I, it's sitting here because it has to cool off before it gets put away. You probably or might have heard about there was someone whose car caught on fire in a Walmart parking lot and it's kind of created this big controversy because they I, their car actually engulfed another car, I think. And obviously it's just a dangerous thing in general because they were cooking and then they put away their camp stove before it was cooled off and then it caught fire. So you have to, whether it's an electric cooker, this co cooled off pretty quickly, or it's a propane stove or butane or whatever you're using to cook, you have to let it cool off before you put it back away in, you know, in the container, in your trunk, whatever. Otherwise, you could totally burn the thing down. So there is some basic safety things that are a little bit different that you have to think about. They're different in a vehicle than in other situations. So when I cook, like, I have to plan for the time when this isn't getting put away. Now, this is a small enough thing that I actually could totally drive around with this sitting here. I would actually have it not sit exactly here. <laughs> I would change this around so it wouldn't slide off. But 
I could have it be sitting. Now my propane stove, my camp stove is too big for that really. It needs to like sit out and also it like closes up. You know, it's an old Coleman stove. It's probably decades old. It's probably older than my son. I think I got it. I think I got it maybe 25 years ago, a long time ago. It's so good. I've dropped it so many times. I so I think for my trip, I'm not going to bring this and most of my electric cooking thing. I'm going to be using propane to cook meals when I'm kind of outside the car in camp. And then I'm going to bring my rice cooker, which is 12 volt that will be plugged into the car when it's running, when I'm driving. And then I'll also bring my little hot, what the heck is that thing called? The, the little 12 volt oven cooker thing that warms things up. It takes a long time. It takes an hour or two, whatever, to warm something up. But if you're in the car driving, that might be totally fine. And so I'm thinking that those two things will be great for reheating food and, and for cooking things that don't really need that much cooking, you know? I could also buy a frozen burrito somewhere and just stick it in there and cook. I mean, that's the idea is that's for when I'm doing a lot of driving. That's what I'm thinking on the trip is that I'll use propane. Now that means that I have to bring different stuff and I'll have to switch things out. I'll need to bring a pot, pan kind of thing. I actually have, I bought some pots and pans that it's like a set where the handles come off. So they are really meant for traveling. And I'll probably bring one kind of pan thing and then one pot that because my Coleman stove has actually two burners so I could make more complicated meals whenever I feel like I'm making you know pasta or something like that um and I could make rice on the cooktop because obviously that's possible to do uh so yeah I'm thinking and also the the so the handles interchange and the lids interchange so I think I could bring a pot and a pan that actually share the same lid and only need one lid and then I have the you know I just bring one handle because you just you don't leave it on while it's cooking. You only use it when you're going to be removing it or moving it around. So that's what I'm thinking. I think I'll still use these little uh, stirs and, and spatulas and such because since they're small, they're actually easier to use and keep and stuff. And and also since they're silicone, they're, they don't scratch things. So I actually really like them. Even though they're, they're tiny and meant for like situations like this, they don't like fall off and fall on the ground because their handle is so long. They wouldn't be good in certain situations of cooking because it'd be unsafe, but mine's a, mine, it's totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up these dishes and then I'm going to be driving to a different part of town to get ready to do the shredding. Hey y'all, so today tried to take in the shredding, but the shredding place is closed. Normally it's open on Saturdays, nine to three, but they decided to take off for the holiday weekend. This is a three day weekend. This is Labor Day weekend. And it wasn't, they didn't like put it on their website or anything like that. It's they just, you know, they just did. And they put a little paper on their door because they're, you know, it's like a little tiny business. It's like a couple. And they work there every day, you know, except for Sunday. So I don't begrudge them for taking the weekend off. I think that's a wonderful thing to do. I wish they would put things on their website or, or something, but uh, when we were there, we were chatting and multiple people came up and were pissed that the place was closed. So yeah. So anyway, the stuff is in the back of the other person's car and we'll just stay there until next week sometime. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But it is out of my storage. So that means I have the space where those seven boxes went, which makes a huge difference. It really does. It's like a two stacks. So I'll be able to work on that. I decided not to go there right now because I find that Saturday afternoon, Saturday afternoons at the storage places is like, so like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do other things, relax, whatever. Um, we also like went out and got coffee and I got a decaf mocha it was like this decaf dark chocolate coconut like mocha it was it was nice i enjoyed it and yeah and just hung out with somebody so it was nice to just have a relatively chill day but also got a bunch of things done i just went to target because i needed to get something i needed to get some coconut oil for the body not for cooking i mean you probably use it for cooking too but um for the body specifically for um, my doctor told me this could be using for moisturizing and everywhere. So you can think about that on your own, but uh, which is really nice. I mean, you could put this in your hair. I don't need this for my hair really. Cause I, I don't have that kind of hair, but, and you know, this is cool. Cause it's, it's all like all the no animal testing, no petroleum. It's so, like, this is to replace all the petroleum jelly type products. Use this instead. And so, cause I really want to get away from using 
freaking petroleum on my body. You know what I mean? That seems not good, even though it does an amazing job. So coconut oil instead. Now, maybe it's totally fine to use just regular food grade cooking coconut oil. I don't know, but I decided to go ahead for the first time doing this to buy stuff from the, you know, lotion department. And apparently this is, it's manufactured in the USA using globally sourced ingredients. So anyway, so I'm, I'm going to use this as my lotion all over and then we'll see how it does. The jar, I'm not quite sure about the jar, if this is going to make a mess. So I will put this in a Ziploc before I put it in my bag. And I will be putting it in my bag before I go to bed tonight. So besides that, the other stuff on my list for the weekend is testing my fridge, maybe starting the test, but I won't do it in the car. I will do that at somebody's house and working on it to my tongue. And then Monday, which is the holiday Labor Day, I'm going to be going to a campground for the night because that's the night that Planet Fitness is closed because it's closed, what did I say, six nights a year. And it closes on holidays, typically like noon or one o'clock and, and then to the next morning, 6 a.m. To be honest, it may not have impacted me at all. There are many times I get there after six, but there are times I get there at two in the morning. So just, I, th I feel like it would have made me nervous and then I would have been needed to get there at two or three or four o'clock in the morning. So I'm just gonna err on the side of caution and go to a campground. And that's gonna be my plan going forward is that for those nights where Planet Fitness is closed locally, that I will either be at a campground or at someone's house that I'm staying with or at a motel you know? And I think that's the best plan, which means that I need to do that for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Christmas is a big one where it's closed for the entire day. So it's closes like Christmas Eve afternoon and then closes all the way until the 6 a.m. the morning after Christmas, Boxing Day or whatever you want to call it. So that will be the big one that I need to stay somewhere for. I have no idea where I'm going to be for Thanksgiving or Christmas. I need to We'll need to talk to my son about that. And I don't know what their plans are because they don't know what their plans are. So I'll cross the bridge when I come back. All right, I'm actually going to just chill out, play some city and relax. It's so overcast and cool that I can just sit in my car and chill literally later. That's, that's a lot of charts. So I really wanted just vegetables and I didn't feel like a salad. So I'm cooking in the car. Since it's not hot outside, it's not insane to cook in the car. And I'm cooking with electricity, of course. And so yeah, I can just put things here and then I will be kind of a saute stir fry thing, but it can't all touch the thing. So I'll just stir it around and keep it going. But I'm gonna use the sriracha powder to make it, it has sriracha and some soy sauce really simple a whole bunch of warm vegetables i actually thought i was like there's a pan express over there i'm like why i have vegetables just cook them up you know this is something that i can do actually in the target parking lot as you can see target right over there that which i actually did go to and yeah i'm just sitting here cooking food so one thing i miss about living in an apartment is i used to have a water pick that I would use for, you know, getting stuff on my teeth and the health of my gums. And it was actually a travel water pick and I thought it was gonna translate to this life, but it did not on many levels. So, cause but the big issue is where do I use it? It's, it is the opposite of stealth, you know, it is loud. And I actually ended up getting rid of it cause it wasn't working, but I mean, literally it wasn't working. But I think, yeah, I really, don't know how to use a water pick because I'm very awkward at it. And so if I was using it in the car, for example, it would get water everywhere. And it's not the kind of thing I can use in public. Like right now, I just brush my teeth in a public restroom at a shopping center, kind of a almost dying shopping center, which is totally fine. No one came to the bathroom when I was doing it. Someone came in right after, but no one came to the bathroom when I was doing it. But a water pick, that, that would be a bit hardcore. I mean, brushing your teeth in a public restroom is not is completely bizarre because some people do that after they eat, you know, good at dental health, even flossing. You could have something in your teeth and you carry floss. Like you're just someone who's like that. But a water pick, yeah, that's a bit over the top, right? So that's actually one of the things that I'm not currently doing that that I would like to figure out how to add back into my life. I'm not gonna worry about it right the second, but yeah, I wanna be able to use a water pick. It would be much easier to get stuff out of my teeth and gums and, and for gum health and all that kind of stuff. So. so 
So when thinking about where to park to hang out before I go to where I'm going to sleep, there's a strategic aspect to this, you know? So like I'm now in a different park, part of the parking lot that I was at because where I was, everything over there closes at 9 p.m. And it's just a few minutes before nine. Here, this Target is open till 10. So there's just people coming and going. And also over there, there were very few cars that besides the cars that were people who were obviously inside. Here, there's all kinds of like cars parked randomly. So there's other people who are doing the same thing as me. And while I actually, a lot of times don't sleep in the same place as lots, lot, well, and I find that there's this balance of not necessarily always going where there's a big crowd of, you know, van lifers, RVs, whatever. But I do like to go where there's people in cars. I think a lot of times they're delivery drivers or people like me who are going to sleep in their car or they're people who are in between things, waiting for something, waiting for someone to get off work, waiting for their gig to start, whatever. And those people have figured out collectively where to park, where no one's going to care. So there is like a interesting calculation there. When, and right here, I'm specifically talking about when I'm in town, when I'm in the city. When I'm in a parking lot and it em completely is empty, when the store closes, it makes me think that most likely somebody is enforcing the property rights of who owns that parking lot. And as such, I do not want to be there. May not always be true, but yeah, sometimes it is. I think the, the danger in parking where a whole bunch of other people are is there's two dangers. One danger is that someone's going to do some sketchy thing and then the cops are going to get called or blah, blah, blah. And it's like this whole extravaganza. The second thing is that some of them or one of them is going to do something that's actually going to be cause a problem for all of you. You know, someone's going to be irresponsible in how they're using that space. They're going to be the person who decides to, you know, do barbecuing out in the parking lot or something ridiculous. And then it's going to make it so no one can park there so people are just you know i mean I, yes i actually cooked in this parking lot in my car where no one would see you know it's actually kind of funny to me when someone has an rv and they cook outside i'm like dude you have a kitchen in there cook in that that's one of the cool parts about it i was actually in my my significant other has a trailer um a camper it's a trailer and i was actually in it today just you know we we're sitting there talking and doing some stuff and then it was so weird to be in there because I mean, I, I've gone camping with my minute, you know, since I've been there many times, but I haven't been in there since I lived in a car. I'm like, wow, this is so big in here. And there's like cabinets. So weird to have all this space, you know, and I do not want one. And if I ever got a trailer, it would not be that size. It would be like one of these incredibly, incredibly teeny ones. I think that it can be super nice, but I don't want to pull a trailer. Like that's something that I'm not up for at this point. Now, maybe when I get a like if i get the subaru outback and it can go out to my land and i decide to actually do stuff on my land it's all lots of ifs then i will probably get one of those kind of utility trailers that you can get from you know harbor freight or whatever and you know it's a couple hundred bucks and i'd have to get a hit well no i'd only have a hitch because the subaru would come with it and the subaru could pull that and then build like a little wood frame for it and then i could use it to haul stuff out to my land because i don't know if i'm able to get stuff delivered so then I might get used to driving a trailer because I feel like I could drive that because it's so little and, you know, I'm just doing it for going to a, you know, hardware store and coming back kind of thing. Then maybe I get used to it and then I would be able to drive something else. I could also see myself getting a trailer that I take out to my land and, and parking it on there to use to live in but while I'm, you know, building something or whatever. But I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to be in this parking lot tonight. I'm going to try staying in this lot until I'm ready to go to where I sleep and see how that goes. Hey, y'all. So I just spent some time in my 10 by 10, went through a number of boxes. That was my son's stuff, went through the ornaments, set aside some ornaments from my son. I had ornaments from the 1970s <laughs> that are actually really neat. I think my son will be really into that. And then, I mean, like a really tiny box just a handful of things and then um went through boxes from my of my own stuff and i'm gonna need to go through all my kind of keepsake things in more detail and be more rigorous and right now i'm trying to just do kind of a first cut because i want to see if it's possible for me to get rid of everything in the 10 by 10 and so what i'll probably end up doing is have a number of boxes that go over to 5 by 10 that i actually still need to go through more but then i'll do that you know in october or november when i'm in town next and I can kind of spend a bit more time 
and have a more specific goal. My goal being to get everything down to what I would display or put in some kind of photo album or binder or something like that. Both of my son's stuff and of, and of mine. I found one thing that was, many things that were very entertaining. One of them was I have every single note every boy ever wrote me in middle school or high school. I actually didn't even read them. I just threw those away. We don't need that drama. We don't need that drama. Uh, Cause it was high drama, high drama stuff. I also have all my pen pal notes and letters and I actually kept those. I'm gonna go through them. And I, cause I think that would be actually a really neat thing is I had a lot of different pen pals when I was in uh, grade school and high school and college actually too. Cause this was before email. <laughs> so I wrote letters and there's something really, really neat about that. I also found this list that I made up in high school that was the 50 things I wanna do with my life. We had had this motivational speaker and, and the guy was like, you know, if you do, if you write your goals, you're gonna have so much more better thing of life and almost no one in this room will do that. So you should be the one to do that. And so I did, because of course I did. I'm the kind of person who would totally do that. The, the goals, some of them I've actually already done. Some of them I'm trying to do, which is like, for example, learning Japanese. Like that was actually on my list when I was a teenager. Some of them were a bit, not a bit, some of them were total white savior things. Like I'm gonna go to Africa and save people. I don't even know what that was about. Like, you know, it was the early nineties and education in the eighties and early nineties was not what you would want. So uh, yeah, no, it was not a bunch of, you know, going and converting people to things and saving people in other countries. I was like, eh. I mean, I, I, my heart was in the right place, but it was totally wrong. And of course, now I understand that being, you know, 30 years older. But there were some things that were very, very funny. Like I wanted to not only live on a moon base, which we don't have a moon base even yet at this point, which is kind of interesting, but I wanted to be a powerful administrator on the room ba on the moon base a powerful administrator, like what? So I, I thought that was entertaining. I also had a whole bunch of things, like, I mean, I was pretty much gonna save the world. So win Nobel Prize, discover the cure for cancer, discover the cure for AIDS. I was doing all those things. There's, there's a lot of things. How was I gonna be running this moon base and also discovering the cure for cancer? That's a lot of work. How was I gonna be doing that? I'm like, oh, 18 year old Elizabeth was so, so yeah. Uh, but it is going to, I'm actually going to go through all those things on the list sometime and talk about, you know, obviously some of them are just terrible white saver things, but going through which ones are things I actually have done and which ones I'm still working on and which ones I decided like the moon base is not something that's happening. Number one, we don't even have a moon base. And also I've realized that me I mean, a long time ago, I, I actually wanted to be an astronaut at that time. I realized that being an astronaut is not something that I'm physically set up to do. I've read a lot about, I mean, I would never apply for it now, but even years ago, I read a lot about people who apply for the space program. And the thing is, it's not only being intellectually able to do it in the education and all those things. It's also, you have to be in such good physical condition, not just good, like the, where you work out, but like you have zero health problems because if you have a health problem when you're in space, there's like, what can they do? Right? So they want to kind of filter all that out. And so there's a whole lot of people who make very far into the space program and they get dropped because they find, you know, the tiniest, tiniest thing, you know, some heart murmur or whatever it is. And they're like, you know, we have to drop you. So me being in the space program wasn't going to happen. Um, I could have actually gone into more sciencey things, but I ended up going to law school and that's, you know, a decision that you make at, at the time. So yeah, it was, that was entertaining. I need to go to the bathroom and there isn't a bathroom here. So there is one by the office, I think, but like the office isn't I don't even know if the office is open at all on Sundays. I can't remember, but it's never open before 10. So it's like eight. So I'm going to go somewhere, go to the restroom, have a little break, etc., And then I'll come back. It is actually drizzling here. So not only is it overcast, but it's drizzling. I actually thought it wasn't going to be overcast today, according to the whatever, the weather thing, but it is overcast and drizzling. So the point of that is that it's really cool, which is great. So lately I've been finding that when I buy lettuce, it goes bad. So here's the issue with going to the grocery store and buying fresh produce. I mean, besides the fact that I don't have refrigeration right now, but I typically will go to the grocery store and I'll buy some vegetables that I'm gonna use to cook something right after I at the grocery store. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm also gonna get some lettuce to eat a salad later. The problem is that not only does that lettuce have to sit in my car all day long until 
I'm going to eat it later. But sometimes I don't eat a salad that night because something happens because I don't feel like it, whatever. I don't know what happens. And then the next day comes salad, like lettuce can go bad really quickly. So I just don't think that that's a very sustainable thing until I have refrigeration, which I'm working on. So getting though these prepared salads right and then eating it within two hours of buying it i think really is the way to go right now until i have refrigeration even though obviously you're paying a markup for the fact that it's in a container and all put together or whatever this so like these these are from target and they actually just apparently lowered the price on them the price is 319 which is actually a very good price for a prepared salad bits is cheaper than the grocery store and so this is 360 calories, which is a fairly good amount for a prepared salad. I've seen a lot less. 13 grams of carbs, so I can eat this plus one or two other things that have carbs in them. And then 18 grams of protein. So this has all the protein I need for a meal, which is great. So like I could have this and then have it with some crackers or whatever. And then I have enough, you know, or like if I had this with like a handful of peanuts or some other nuts, or if I had, yeah, like crackers, pizza bread, whatever, then I totally have enough. And actually even could add extra croutons, but that would make enough for a meal. So I bought this now. It's only 8 44. I'm not actually hungry enough to eat it yet, but I need to eat it within two hours. So I'm going to go back to, to the 10 by 10, work on that more, knowing that I have the salad in here to eat in two hours. So I'm more like ready for that. So that will be good. And yeah, like I, I'm starting to make progress going back into the storage unit, which is great. And getting closer and closer to the back part so I can go through all that stuff. I think I've gone through that all already. And so I actually need to, or I've gone through most of it already. So, and it'll be a lot easier. So I have some stuff to take cherry like books and I'll actually take that myself just to make sure that it doesn't go in a, um, it says it's just like one or two boxes and yeah. I think that I'm making good progress and the weather is definitely helping. Hey y'all, so I have a bunch of stuff in my car. This is the fridge and it's out of my storage and I'm going to plug it in at somebody else's house and freeze a whole bunch of stuff and then we're gonna see how that goes. This is food that was in my storage, which should not have been in my storage. You're not supposed to put food in your storage. And it was there because I literally just couldn't keep it in my car. So this is also going to go at somebody's house, but I'm going to actually pull some stuff out of here to stay in my car. It was more just, I couldn't deal. This is like everything that was in my pantry. So yeah. So progress. I've made great progress on the storage room. I've, I'm gone in about two thirds through the room. There's a lot. So now I just have the back third and the back third, I am fairly confident that I'm not gonna want 99% of it, that I'm gonna be able to go through boxes and be like, no, no, no. The issue is, is that I needed to get some of this stuff out so I could actually like access the very back. So I need a little bit more room, but yeah. I actually am feeling very positive about this all now. And I think the order I'm gonna do things is as soon as I get to a point where I've gone through everything and I have the, it'll, it's about five, six of that 10 by 10 that I can immediately call someone to come and haul off. They can haul off all that stuff and then I'll have a little bit of space more to go like physically to go through the rest of the stuff, pare it down to go in my five by 10. When I do that, then I may or may not run out of time. And if I do, then I have to pay for one more month and that's fine. But I, that's just a different strategy than in, I don't want to have to force myself to deal with all the electronics and deal with all the keepsake stuff before I call the junk haulers. I want that junk haulers come first. And then I'll have a lot more room, both mentally and physically in the space. So I need a snack. I, need, I apparently need a lot of snacks and treats to get me through going through all this. So I'm gonna go get myself a treat. So to get to the back part of this, I need a headlamp. As you can see, I don't have that on. It's really hard to see anything back there. So yeah, it's like I'm spelunking or something inside my we're, we're, I've gone all the way to this line. So I just have the back third to do. And I suspect that 99% of that's gonna go, but I need to go through it all to make sure there's nothing to one shred and two keep. Okay, I was right. This went through in just a couple minutes. None of that stuff I want. So now, oh, and it doesn't even shred, it's just stuff. So now there's this which has a lot of, you know, like there's a lot of boxes to go through. A lot of it is books, info products, 
toys. So I'm actually much closer than I thought. Oh, getting back here, a bit claustrophobic. Oh, okay. I will survive. It's like about three o'clock and that's all I got for today. I ate on the storage unit, like I'm just it's so really physically hard because it's so stuffy inside the storage unit because I'm like crawling back in there and it's kind of hard to get around all the stuff and at a certain point I am just like I'm sweating after a short period of time so tomorrow I will come back early at you know seven o'clock or whatever time I'm after I take a shower and stuff and work on it then and I might be able to actually finish the the big going through everything still have to deal with all the electronics and the the already whittled down keepsakes but i need to whittle them down even more but the kind of it's almost like the the rough cut where five six of it more than five six like seven eighths of it will be ready to go and then i can call junk haulers have them take that off and then i think then i think going through the last parts will be easier because i'll physically be able to like put things in piles i have this big 10 by 10 space it won't be as stuffy in there and um yeah, I think I'll be able to go through it easier. Whether I'll get through that by the time I leave, I don't know. But having the junk haulers haul off most of it will be huge, huge, huge difference. So I'm feeling very positive about it. If I get that done, then I'll schedule the junk haulers to come this week. And yeah. Well, that's great stuff that I have in my container. Yeah, can. Here's a let's hate it. Here's some. This will be great. Mm -hmm. But some of this is more for like when I actually refrigerate things up with leftovers and things. So I kind of just realized that I'm going camping tomorrow. <laughs> I need to go grocery shopping tomorrow. And I also need to kind of meal plan and then look through the stuff in the car to see if there's anything that I need for camping, a one night camping trip that I don't have. Because I put so much stuff away. You know, if I want to make coffee in the morning, because it will be chilly, the coffee stuff is in the storage. So, you know, just stuff like that. So, yeah, I need to do that. So my plan for tomorrow is to, for, you know, get up and do my normal things with showering or whatever. I'm not going to work out because I'm going to be working in the 10 by 10 and that will be enough of a workout. I might also go hiking at the campground. I actually have no idea how I feel when I'm there. So my plan is to go to the 10 by 10 early, seven, whatever, and maybe finish it all. Finish the stuff that I'm gonna do before the junk callers. I have most of the day to work on it because I can't go out to the campground. Not only go, you're not supposed to go there until the afternoon for checking in is probably two o'clock or something like that. But also there'll be really bad traffic going that way in the morning. So there's no point in me trying to get there early. So I will be working on the storage until you know for i'll work on it for the morning now at a certain point i will stop working on it and i will work on meal planning and going to my five by ten and getting out what i need for the trip or whatever bed don't need anything i'll have to look around probably we'll take coffee stuff though i'm thinking i want to make hot coffee when i'm out there I, oh and i also need to have some warmer clothes like just you know a pair of sweatpants or something it sounds like a good day i'm looking forward to it looking forward to a little mini day camping i think that's a nice way to spend the holiday it's kind of nice spending the night of the holiday and not the three-day weekend so that way i'll go there when everyone's left you know and it'll be kind of nicer most likely and it's nice because i don't have to be back tuesday at any particular time so i can hang out there in the morning if i feel like it this week i have a lot of things that are on my list but it's actually because it's right now it's sunday night so i've been planning out my week for next week but the things i wrote i wrote actually on a post-it note instead of actually writing them in my in my organizer because i'm they're kind of tentative because i need to get the 10 by 10 sorted and call the junk caller if i finish 10 by 10 tomorrow morning i'll call the junk callers to come on wednesday morning if not then i will call them actually i'll do it online but to do it on thursday morning and i'll finish it on wednesday maybe tuesday but probably more like wednesday because i like i working there in the morning when it's cool it actually makes a lot more sense so we'll see how long that takes me then 
I can kind of figure out how I'm doing handling the rest of the week. As far as what I'm going to do actually when I'm on my trip, um, there are some hikes there at the campground. I'm mostly going on the trip just to have somewhere to spend the night and take a shower in the morning when Planet Fitness is closed. The Planet Fitness reopens at 6 a.m. Most of the time I'm not there till after 6 or right around 6, but sometimes I get there at 2 or 3 a.m. because I can't sleep. So I don't ever want to have nowhere to go. I also, I also think that I, yeah, like either on the times when Planet Fitness is closed, I'm either going to have be in a campground or a, a motel or hotel. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for Thanksgiving or Christmas because it is dependent upon what my son is doing, which of course my son does know I have absolutely no idea what they're going to be doing. I think I might go ahead and make hotel reservations now because I, I probably will stay in a hotel in town. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and make reservations now so that way I have them, but something non-refundable. As far as all this stuff, but once that gets done, then I need to do a bunch of admin video things like upload my videos to Amazon S3 just for storage. I need to download all the vids off this camera, that's my phone, to create space on it. And I always download it to different places. So I have it on a, you know, a backup since I'm going to be deleting them off this phone. I'm working on a membership program for the YouTube channel. I'm working on a podcast for the YouTube channel. By working, I mean, I'm literally just brainstorming right now, but starting to work more on that. And, oh, I want to film with my new camera. I keep putting that on my to-do list and never have actually done it. Not actually, I mean, I've, I tried to make sure it worked, but I haven't really done it. Test the fridge. I was hoping I might do that today, but it didn't happen. So it's not going to be until probably Wednesday or Thursday or something. And then just editing video for this channel, posting it. All right, I'm going to relax before bed. Later. Okay, here we are. Maybe the last day I'm going to be going through the big bulk of things. This stuff has all been gone through. This stuff has all been gone through. That stuff has been gone through. So it's just that part back there. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get through it all today. If not, I will finish it on Wednesday and have the junk callers come on Thursday. Okay, so I've gotten through everything. I have two boxes that I need to switch out that are nice boxes that I'm going to shred so i'm going to take everything out of them and then put the stuff in some of these boxes that i'm keeping into that so it'll make more sense i have two boxes of kid stuff for my son that i'm going to look through real quick and see if i can um whittle that down to one or if i might just keep it for right now but yes um i have some these containers are drawers and i'm going to go ahead and put them in my other storage so one banker's box left i don't know if i'm going to keep these are not, they're the under bed containers. I don't know if they're, <sighs> I'm so proud of myself. The, the reason I was able to get through that last section so quickly is because I actually had already done it in 2014. 2014. <laughs> the amount of stuff that I found, like office supplies, multiple boxes of office supplies that obviously I had rebought multiple times. I mean, things like that are just maddening how much money was spent on stuff. There's no point in spending money storing things. It's just throwing more good money at down drain after bad. Good money after other good money. I don't know how that goes. So yeah, so I'm going to be able to schedule the junk haul. Hopefully they'll have time on Wednesday. And then that, that then everything except for this little area will be gone. I do have some more boxes for shredding. Uh, and I don't know if they do that. I don't, I'm not planning on them doing that. So I'll have to take another load for shredding, but yeah, I'm very proud of myself. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this last bit. Yeah. And then I'm I'm good. So, made great progress on the storage room. I actually, the, the last part didn't take that long because there was already, I'd already gone through the stuff nine years ago. So, uh, I think one of the big reasons I didn't get rid of stuff before now is because I actually was not aware that there were junk callers where you could just call them and they would haul off all the stuff and you had to pay them a bunch of money, but like it's done and it stops the bleeding. It, I wish I would have, if I could, you know, go back and tell past Elizabeth 10 years ago, Hey, you could pay someone to haul this stuff off. I wish I could have done that. It just, I don't know. I just wasn't aware of that wasn't on my radar. So now that I got that done, there's nine, no, there's eight boxes in there to take to the shredders besides the seven that I already have out. There's two drawers that I'm going to take to my other storage, but I'm not doing it right now. It's not open anyway. And I just don't feel like having a bunch of stuff in here. I want to focus on the next thing that I'm going to be doing today, which is 
going camping. And I have um, the stuff that's the electronic stuff to process and the keepsake stuff, which I'm not doing between now and the junk haulers come. I'm just going to junk haulers to come, have them take all the stuff, and then I'll have so much more room. I can set aside all the shredding things. I can set aside all the electronics. I can set aside all the keepsakes and then go through things in a systematic way and I'll have actual space to do it in. I won't have any furniture there, but I can't use the furniture right anywhere because there's so much stuff. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and schedule that now so it is on the calendar, hopefully for Wednesday, if not Thursday. And then, yeah, and then get going on all the other gigantic things on my to-do list because I always have a gazillion things. The main thing today is getting ready to go camping. I need to kind of do an inventory of my car and see what's in here. What else do I need to get for my storage unit? That is camping stuff. I'm only going for one night, so I don't need that much stuff really, but I would like to be able to eat and cook food and stuff like that. So I want to see what I have and what I'm going to bring with me. And, and I need to go grocery shopping for that, obviously. Well, it's not obvious. I mean, I don't, here's the thing. I don't have to actually go grocery shopping, but I went to grocery shopping. I'd like to get, I think I'm going to get a half dozen of eggs and I think I'll get like, like a potato or two and, you know, actually cook food. I think that would be nice, especially if I'm camping to actually cook food kind of in a way that I would do if I was on a big trip, except that I'm just going for one night. I'm not going to be leaving early and get there right when you can check in, which is what I kind of normally do with camping. I'm not going to be doing that because the most likely will be really bad traffic going that way, or at least mediumly bad traffic because of the holiday. So I'll wait until the traffic reverses and then I'll go out there. So I don't know, probably late afternoon if I go out there. The one thing that's awkward about today is since the library is closed, that's like my you know, default place to go to the bathroom. So I'll have to go to my other places to use the restroom. And that, that is something that is hard about holidays is that the, besides the fact that Planet Fitness closes for some of it, I mean, I was good to go this morning to take a shower, but they, I wouldn't be able to go there at 4.30 a.m. tomorrow. But besides Planet Fitness, there's also the, the libraries and community centers and all those kind of places, all the government buildings are closed on these major holidays. And so it is awkward for, you know, where do I go to the bathroom? that whole thing. I know there's all kinds of people who go to the bathroom in their car. If I had like even a minivan, I think that would be logistically much more feasible. I have a setup to go to the bathroom in the car, but it is for emergencies. This is not something I want to be doing all the time. I don't want to have to deal with it on many, 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 many levels. I don't even want to, like the thing is, even if I had, even if I had a van, like a, if I had a cargo van, I don't see myself putting in a black tank and doing all that. You know, it's just, I don't see myself ever getting a porta potty where I have a black tank. That is just something I do not want to deal with. No, I'd rather look for a place to go to the bathroom or if I'm out in the woods, then I should go pee outside. That's no problem at all. I did get a collapsible toilet and a shelter that I haven't even like, well, I've, I've done the collapsible toilet thing, but I haven't actually even put the shelter up yet to see what it's like. That's how I can go to the bathroom in dispersed camping when there's other people around. Also, when at my last trip, I was completely unable, no, the two trips ago, I didn't even try my last trip, two trips ago, I was completely unable to poop in a hole. Like I've done it in my life, but my body was just like, no, we don't do this. We will hold it. And it was very uncomfortable. And I just couldn't get my body to relax. And my thought is if I have a little thing that I sit on, then my body will like, oh, we're going to the bathroom on a toilet. You know, and then I'll... So, but I'm not going to bring that on this camping trip. That's going to be for my big trip where I do plan to do some dispersed camping. I have not done any research or any more planning than making some camping reservations though. Okay, so what do I do now? I was actually planning this was going to take a lot longer than it did. I mean, it took a while, but I thought it was going to take a lot longer than it did. So part of the reason it also didn't take longer is there was like two more boxes of my kids stuff. One actually had already been pre-sorted, so I think that I don't think that needs anything. The other box, I was just like, okay, I'm not dealing with this one. It's just gonna go over here in the pile of stuff to go through later when I go through keepsakes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule the thing and we'll see how it goes. Today's so awkward because the holidays, because the library is closed and all libraries around here are closed, community centers and all that stuff. So obviously I can go to the park, but I didn't, I actually, didn't want to drive all the way down there just to go to the bathroom and it was, I wasn't planning on hanging out there. And there'll be a lot of people at the park most likely because it's a holiday. And I'm going to be going camping this afternoon. So, so I really actually want to do is, hey, is go to the library. It's closed, but I'm going to go outside of the library. And because I want to actually, since I got the 10 by 10 stuff sorted so early in the day before 8 a.m., I actually want to do some work. 
and I'm gonna be working stuff for this channel. And also I need to like do some kind of admin back end things like uploading my a backup of all my videos to Amazon S3 and you know, just stuff like that, that I need internet access for. So I'm gonna drive over there. I actually had to come here to go to Target number one so I could go to the bathroom because <laughs> Target opens at eight. And, and also I wanted to see what their food was like in there. I had got one of their salads and it was very inexpensive, but their food's kind of all over the place and whether or not it is actually good value. So it just depends on what it is. I, I need to get green onions and potatoes, individual potatoes and Trader Joe's, their potatoes, like the individual potatoes you could buy were really big, which made sense because they charge by potato, but I actually want a couple small potatoes. So it's better for me to go to a place where they charge by the pound, which is somewhere like a regular grocery store, like a Safeway or whatever. Uh, and, and I also want green onions and tra this Trader Joe's didn't have any. Trader Joe's is so weird in that way. Anyway, it'd be better for me to get green onions at Safeway anyway, because I can get a smaller amount. So yeah, so those are the last two things I need for my groceries to make some really nice food while I'm camping. And then I'm just gonna be working today before I go on my trip. So it's, it is pretty early in the day. I think it's a little after nine and I'm not really not gonna leave for the campground until mid afternoon. I'm just gonna wait and see when traffic is done. Also, I'm at a campsite. I'm not gonna be super loud talking because it's so quiet here and there is somebody at the next sites. So, you know, I don't wanna disturb their solace with me recording videos. <laughs> that seems uncool. This is a campground that is, it was like 25 minutes from where I used to live and I literally didn't even know it was here. So weird, so weird. Maybe it was always full. I don't know how I never came here. Anyway, this was super easy to get to. I have still have internet access, but it's a campground, you know, and they have showers. They're very old school, like put in the quarters showers, but that'll be totally fine. And the, you know, flush toilets, there's water, there's trash service, recycling service, all the things. And actually I'm like five minutes from town. I could go to wherever I want, but I'm here and I'm not planning to leave while I'm here. I'm planning to make my meals and actually cook food, you know, with potatoes and eggs and everything. I got six eggs and a couple of potatoes. And so I'm planning to make different things with the eggs. I'll make a stir fry kind of thing, or I'll make a um, fried rice. I'll make a, like a breakfast scramble. And then I'm going to make like a taco bowl, but with eggs. I think it'll be good. I don't have any tortillas. I slightly regret buying not buying tortillas, but that's fine. It's very nice being in the woods. It's very nice being at a campground, especially on a day where I couldn't go to the library. So I'm here. It's just, what time is it? It's only 2.36. I actually am planning to do some work. Not because you should always do work when you're camping, but this is my life. This isn't just a camping trip. So I have things to edit and I have things to download and like all kinds of computery things and notebooky things. That's what I was planning to do for a chunk of the time today. I don't really want to go hiking right now because it's fairly warm. Not hot, but fairly warm. So my plan is to go hiking in the morning. The trail that starts right over here. I thought I'd go hiking there in the morning. I do not have warm clothes with me because my warm clothes was already packed for my big trip. I kind of forgot about this trip. So it'll probably be really chilly in the morning and I, I have one more blanket, but I don't have warm clothes. So we'll see how that goes but it is nice. It smells nice in here. Now, one thing is they said this is covered with poison ivy, like all around the edges is poison ivy. So, you know, so I'm not, I'm going to stay in, in my campsite and I go into the brush. One thing that's really nice about camping when you sleep in your car is I have almost no setup. I put my chair out, you know, and that's literally all I did. <laughs> now I'm reading on my Kindle. Just chill. So different campgrounds have different energy. Some of them have around the woods energy. Some of them have, you know, serious nature, hiking, backpacking people energy. Some of them are super friendly. Some of them are very different than that. There are places where people are partying 
or they're places where people are. I don't know. It's very different. Very different energy, different ones. This one is very close to town. So a lot of people who were kind of on vacation, that kind of energy. But then there's also some people who I think are like me and live in their vehicle. But people, some people live in their vehicle are positive and some of them are not. I heard one of my neighbors, I can't actually see what was going on, but I guess a kid went through their campsite. There's trails that connect all the campsites, but it you know, totally makes sense. And they went off this huge yelling of whoever this kid was. I'm like, I mean, I couldn't actually see it. It was too far away for me to do anything or also even see what was going on. But I mean, it was like, it bizarrely, bizarrely disproportionate. And it wasn't like they were doing it over and over again because I've been here for a while. So that person, they're angry and unhappy. And I'm like, wow, I'm glad I'm only staying here one night. Because the energy of this place isn't really you know, necessarily my thing. I mean, it could just be the one says it for people, you know, but still, I'm just like. I had a good meal uh, with potatoes, eggs, uh, peppers, green onions, and then I had hot sauce on it. It was the right amount because I really didn't need that much to eat. So if I had tortillas, it probably wouldn't have been too much, even though I actually like some tortillas. One thing that's weird about this campground, about campgrounds in this genre of campgrounds is it is noisy. You know, vehicles driving by, little noises, people. I, I kind of forgot about that because since the last trip I went on, it was dispersed camping. And then also that campground that was a campground where I think it was super, super spread out. It's fairly remote. So I'm, I forgot about that. Very loud vehicle just started. So yeah, it's this is a nice campground in that you can see all the green behind me. Like there's a campsite right on the other side of that green and there's a campsite over there. But I can't actually see them. They're not actually in line of sight. So that's actually very, very nice. There are campsites that have much less green coverage, but this one does. Now that greenery is all poison ivy, but you know, that's fine. I'm not gonna go through it. It would be no good if you had a dog. That would be your troubles. You'd have to keep the dog on a tight leash. So anyway, yeah, this isn't my favorite kind of camping, being in campgrounds with people right next to you kind of stuff. However, it is wonderful to have a toilet and to have running water and a picnic table. The big thing is a picnic table. Yeah, it's not that far away from the sunset. Once it gets to sunset, then, oh, that's that person who was yelling. That truck is, pickup truck is really old, which I kind of think pickup trucks that old are cool, but, it is not a quiet pickup truck. <laughs> I don't know where she's going. Anyway, yeah, it makes me think more about like how it will be nice when I can go to more and more remote places. On my trip, I have three days in one national park and three days in another national park in campgrounds. And I expect that it will be, you know, busy, touristy campgrounds. But all the rest of the time, I'm going to do dispersed camping and I'm really excited about that. Um, I might go to some campgrounds, but they won't be, you know, <laughs> with people right next to kind of campgrounds. They'll be like the free campgrounds that have no service, that's kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really thinking that for my trip, I'm going to use propane in my other gas cooker. I'll take my rice cooker and my heating thing to use in the car when I'm traveling. But besides that, I'll use my gas if I end up taking my fridge. So I'm going to test my fridge out. Hopefully this week, I'm going to borrow someone else's electricity to get it cooled down to freezing and have it be completely full of cold stuff and then use that coldness to keep my my little soft cooler cold. And we're going to see how with that method, and we're going to see how that goes and how much electricity that uses. If, if I'm using all my cooking with propane, then this will only need to be powering the fridge and then occasionally, you know, powering up my phone or whatever. Uh, but generally speaking, it will just be to do the fridge. And then my other battery will be just to do my CPAP. And, and then I'm thinking that when I'm driving, I'll have to test out whether it makes more sense to keep my fridge, just plug my fridge into the car or use the car to plug, to charge the batteries. You know what I mean? Or I could do both at the same time if the car is okay with that. <laughs> it doesn't draw too much power. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about, a lot of moving parts. I'm glad I did this in a stair-step way, though, and didn't start out with the fridge from the beginning because there's just too many things to understand and to work out the bugs on. 
I think it's good to do things in little bits. At least it's good for me. I'm so proud of myself at the 10 by 10. I'm gonna have, and having the junk collars come and take stuff away. And then I think once that happens, I'll be able to deal with the other rest of the stuff much better. So I'll just literally have more space. But we'll see. We'll see. Hey, y'all. So very different than my very first night when I was holding this and talking. But you can't see a giant pile of stuff, right? I mean, there's a bit of stuff, you know, but it's not a giant pile. It's much, much better. So I am at a campground. I'm in my car. I will leave the car one more time to go to the bathroom before I go to bed because I can because there's a bathroom here. But I'm in my car pretty much for the night because it's dark and I don't do campfires outside um, by myself. If I'm with somebody else who wants to do one, that's great, but it's smoky and costs money and I actually don't like to do it every night. Like that isn't, that doesn't make it kind of fun or special. So it's more the kind of thing I'll do when I'm with other people who really want to have a campfire. Anyway, I am now just going to do in a way kind of my normal evening things, except that I don't have to move my car. <laughs> For parking lot after parking lot after parking lot, I can just stay here, my little space. So I have my back and side windows all covered. And one thing I just did that I have never done before is have a light on. I had this light on inside the car, and then I had to look around from the outside to see what I could see. My side windows, you can't see anything because they have both the window coverings and the screen on. I haven't cracked them them yet, but I will be. My two, these two sides, you can see just a teeny bit on the edges. In the back, you can see just a teeny bit on the edges. But mostly, it just looks like I have black windows that, you know, have been tinted really dark. That's what it looks like. So I'm really happy about that. That was just a nice thing to see, you know. And yeah, I'm just going to be in here chilling. I actually kind of have more stuff in here than I would normally have when I'm in town because I normally would have put my backpack in the trunk. But I might want to go on my laptop. I haven't decided yet. So I left that in here and also in the morning. So what I'm planning is obviously to get up, eat breakfast, uh, take a shower. I might go on a hike or I might not. I'm not like, I'm not really actually here to do camping. You know what I mean? I haven't decided yet, but I might, I might go on a hike, especially if I'm cold and I want to do it to, you know, be warm. But I also might just, I could just stay in here. Get I could go, I have to go out and go to the bathroom, but then uh, you know, I could stay in here, then maybe leave to shower, leave to um, eat. I don't actually have to take a shower here also. The shower is not like, the shower's not that great. Um, I could totally go back to town and shower when I shower, go shower at Planet Fitness when I get back to town because it opens tomorrow. It just isn't open until 6 a.m. And a lot of times I need it before them. So yeah, I can just lounge here as much as I want. I can stay in this campsite until noon. So I don't have anything I have to do at any particular time tomorrow. My next thing on the calendar is Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. So, yeah. So, right now, I can just I can just chill in here. I have, don't be wrong, I have stuff to do. But I could also not do stuff and just relax and do my own hobbies and read a book and, you know, play a video game and whatever. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So, I'm going to see how it goes. One of the things that I do want to make sure that I do is not work all the time and make sure that I actually do enjoyable hobby things and, and stuff like that and not just work, work, work. Because since I don't have a normal Monday through Friday schedule, is a real it'd be really like easy to do that without realizing it. So anyway, I'm just gonna be relaxing in here for a while and then I'll go to bed. Probably well I'll probably go to the bathroom one more time and then go to bed. Bye bye. So I'm at a campground. I thought you could see how I have to move over to get from here to the back. I went to the bathroom. It's like five in the morning and I am totally going to get back into bed. Probably not to sleep anymore, but to lounge, which means I have to get flying from here to here. And in the beginning, this was incredibly hard, but now it's like very normal. So usually this wouldn't have a fan on it yet if I was getting into bed for the first time. And I just grabbed this to lift myself up so I don't hurt myself on anything. And I pretty much just fall down in here and then squish it. So, and then some of my times my hair gets caught on the top. I also realized that my estrogen patch that I just started, hormone placement therapy, actually came off. 
last night when I went to bed. I was like, oh, I'll check it. And it wasn't there. So I will put on a new patch when I take a shower next. But I'm just like, so I think the reason is, is that I move a lot differently. And there, that's why I just demonstrated that. I move a lot differently than most people. And I had put it on my, like my lower back, upper buttock kind of area. And you see, I squish around a lot. And that's what I'm thinking is that it just gets rubbed off. So next time I'm going to put it in the front and try that part of my body. Now we're at the point of the morning while well, in a campground where I have to try to see like, okay, I'm hungry. I want coffee, but also I'm really liking being in my blankets and being all warm. Since I don't have long pants, it's really hard to get motivated to go outside. But I, I really am thinking I'm not going to take a shower here. I mean, I'm seriously like 20, 30 minutes away from Planet Fitness. Maybe probably 30 minutes. And the shower is not nice. So I can, when I, I can go back to Planet Fitness. I'm going to get back to town and that'll be fine. I don't think I'll work out because I'm going to go over to the storage unit and finish the last bits I want to do before they come tomorrow. So other things that are going on is for my other channel, I'm having a problem with the ad revenue and which it's kind of really complicated, but the short version is my ad revenue tanked. It went from like making making like twenty five hundred dollars a month to like four hundred dollars a month, if that. And I didn't I didn't do anything. I didn't change anything. It is actually something that's happened with a lot of people's channels where YouTube claims it's invalid traffic. YouTube claims this, but it's actually a bug. So I'm going to try to troubleshoot that, and then also I need to generate other ways to make money. I can obviously always take legal clients. I would have to change a bunch of things to be able to do that, but I could. First, I'm going to try to troubleshoot this issue, which I just started doing some different things to the channel. I actually changed settings on for my top generating revenue videos to see if that actually kicks the algorithm and makes the bug not happen anymore. So I'm hoping that might work. Um, and then I have three other things that I'm going to change also on that channel, but I'm going to test each one and in a, do it in a kind of scientific way and let that run, test run for a few days to see if it makes any changes. So that's part of it. That's one thing that I'm doing. Um, and then I obviously have other ways to make money, but I want to try the, oh, the most potentially simple thing to do. So we'll see if that works out. So this morning, I'm going to make coffee, make breakfast, hot breakfast. So that's really nice to have hot breakfast and hot coffee. I actually still do light coffee, uh, but it's, I just don't like doing it when I'm in town. So I'm realizing some things that I actually need for when I start traveling again. These, these, um, make it so I can open up the window and I wanted to have them from the front windows as well. You can see how foggy it is because it gets steamy in here. Doesn't matter that much. Doesn't matter that much when I'm by my, and when I'm camping, but it isn't that great to have all that kind of humidity inside the car over the long term. So I'd like to be able to crack these windows at night. I'm sure, you know, sometimes I won't. Sometimes it'll be too cold. Oh the, oh, the birds are making noises now. So I, yeah, like I, I'm going to finish up stuff at the storage unit. That's my, was my number one thing to be doing this week is get the 10 by 10 done. I slept okay last night. One of the things, there's no, no difference because I was in a campground. Um, one of the things is, is that I can't, because my bed, the way my bed is, because it's kind of narrow, I guess, maybe, I actually have to wake up to roll over. But I don't know. A lot of times I wake up, I'm not even rolling over. I don't know. I, I mean, I am upset about my estrogen patch falling off because I got to put it, another one on and then it means I lose it. You know, I mean, I, it's like I only get so many of these and they actually don't quite give you enough because you get four per month, but there's 4.2 weeks per month. And now I've lost a week. I don't know. We'll see. My gynecologist is, is cool. So um, I'm sure she could figure something out. If these ones don't work, they have ones that are twice a week, but I have to be able to keep it. I, 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 it wasn't even half a week. It was just a couple of days. I think this is about figuring out where it needs to go on my body. Oh, it is always something. 
<sighs> All right, I'm going to try to motivate myself to get out of the car. So I had a good day, good day today. It was, th there was something about being in the campground this morning. I was there until like 1130. I had breakfast and then lunch there, cooked them. And it was so great spending that time in the woods in a campground where I didn't have to drive anywhere. And I was just chilling and it was mostly quiet that not only did I have a ton of clarity and I was able to get a lot of stuff like worked out in my head of what I was going to do in many different ways, but also it rejuvenated me and I had a lot of energy. So when I came back, I worked so much. I went to the library. I was there working in the library. Um, I left and get something neat and came back. And then I was there until like 6 45 PM. Like I had, I, and the thing is I worked this morning too when I was at the park. So, I mean, I did a incredibly productive day. Now, as I've talked about a little bit before, I'm having a financial problem with income. So it's funny because a video just went up today. That was how I make money. And a whole bunch of stuff I said in the video actually isn't how I make money anymore because that income disappeared. Not a bunch of different kinds of income, but one thing. So I have my YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel, the legal one, used to make always $2,500 a month or more in ads and ad revenue. And we're talking for, I don't know, a year and a half, more than that. So I kind of thought it was fairly reliable. And that was a mistake. That was a mistake because one day it just little disappeared. And now it's going to be probably, I don't know, three or $400 instead of 2,500. So I need to replace that income. I'm now also trying to troubleshoot that that problem is. I actually think it is, there's this bug in YouTube ad stuff that has plagued many creators and I've read up about it a lot and I'm trying to do some things to troubleshoot that. And so I may end up being able to get that ad daily ad revenue back, but I can't depend on that working, you know? So I'm, I'm going to do a scientific experiment where I'm going to change something and let that go for a certain amount of time, change up, you know, then change it back if that doesn't work and then do something else, you know? So it might take me a while and I might never fix it or it might just mysteriously be fixed. So, because it's different creators have testified to different things. So I don't actually need to replace $2,500 because it will bring in some money. And then also this channel is now monetized and is bringing in a little bit of money. It'll bring in a couple hundred bucks. So I need to replace about, let's say about two grand to be safe. So what I'm doing besides just all kinds of general hustle things with affiliate stuff and sponsorship stuff and launching a membership program and things, all those things will take a while to make money or they'll make little tiny amounts of money. Like the money that I make on affiliate stuff right this second is like dollars. <laughs> it hasn't even gotten to more than $10. Um, well, I have actually, I haven't checked in a couple of days. Maybe it has, but you know, the first last time I looked, it was a do less than $2 on affiliate on Amazon affiliate because people just bought books. So that's not that expensive. And I get a small percentage of that. So the big thing for me is to take some clients in my law practice. So I announced to that channel and to the Patreon and to some people on email who had emailed me and such like that, that I was open to taking some more trademark clients. And one person said, so far, and this, I just did this today. One person emailed back, oh yeah, I'm interested. And I sent her an invoice and how, you know, instructions for how to get started and stuff. So, and that's $850. Um, so I only need a couple of those each month to replace that income. And the reason I have been apprehensive about taking that trademark work, because I can, of course, trade it and yes, it would be a bunch of extra money, even if I was still getting the $2,500, is because when I take a trademark client, I'm committing for two to three years of that project. And it won't take me a lot of hours over those two to three years, but it's two to three years. Now it might get done in an hour, in a year and a half. I mean, but it might take two or three years or more. I would say, yeah, I would say the, I would say three and a half would probably be about the max it would take. So but that means that that puts off when I can stop doing client work 
that much farther. And the, the reason that's relevant isn't because that's going to take a lot of hours of work. It's because I have to keep having my malpractice insurance, which is like $400 a month. I have to stay, have my law license, which is $500 a year. That's not that big of a deal, but like the 300 something dollars a month for malpractice insurance is a lot. And so I have to keep up all those expenses as long as I'm still practicing law in a traditional law firm way, as opposed to just having a YouTube channel. Um, then I could, if I just had a YouTube channel for my legal practice, I could put my law license into inactive and just not do legal advice. I would have to not also have my Patreon too, of course. So anyway, I feel really positive about all that stuff. So that's really good. And I'm glad that it looks like I'm going to get that trademark project. We'll see if the person actually ends up going forward or not, but she sounded pretty excited. And so then I'm going to, and then I'll probably get some more people in the next few weeks. And it does mean that I'll have to actually do legal work from on the road. Um, I won't try to do legal work when I'm at, like at the national parks, but I'm going to have to, I mean, I was going to schedule time to do work anyway, but I'm going to have to like schedule time where I'm going to be able to have client calls and stuff like that, uh, which I wasn't really planning to do. I was planning to just have client, just have one or two days per month and have it the beginning of September at the end of October to do client calls. But it, I'll probably have to do it in the middle if I end up getting a bunch of um, new trademark clients. So anyway, I am feeling good about all that. I feel very high energy. I put on a new patch for the estrogen hormones. So we'll see if that one stays on. If this one does not stay on, then my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I might do this anyway. I'm going to go into like CVS, which I can actually see behind me right now. And I actually might walk over there now and look for some kind of some things to go over this to kind of seal it. I don't know what yet, but that's what I'm thinking. So that will, that will be the next thing that I try to try to keep it from falling off. I mean, where is even the one that fell off? I have no idea. I have no idea. I checked it and then the next day I checked it, it was gone. So it's like, like in my bed. I don't know. And they had all these warnings, like, don't let this get in the hand of children and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. It just falls off after two freaking days, maybe two and a half. All right. I'm going to go back to reading my book. All right. Later.